the cheat sheet that I've always, uh, especially given to our folks at Axe as a Trader is, you know what, you want to play the premium hands, the premium hands. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is well, right? Uh, it is, for all of us who live in the Northeast or a lot of parts of the country, it's just brutal, brutal outside. I just went to Whole Foods. It was six degrees outside, just incredible. So hopefully uh, one of the blessings in life just to have a shelter uh, with some 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 heat and you know everything else kind of works out well. But again, guys, uh, hope everybody is well. Uh, Merry Christmas, right? Merry Christmas, everybody. It is uh, 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas, a uh, great Christmas day. If you're like my family, um, you know, we have that whole Christmas Eve fish and pasta, and then Christmas day is meat and everything else under the sun. A lot of food, um, a lot of love, and a lot of happiness. And that's the most important thing, and I wish that uh, for everybody. So let's talk about the markets, right? If you are new here, uh, please support the channel. Uh, subscribe if you are new. Uh, like, you know, like the broadcast. We'll try to give you uh, as much uh, a fair, unbiased approach and view uh, to the market. So let's talk about the tape. So the, the bulls are still kind of trying to figure out the hawkish stance from the previous uh, Fed meeting the previous Wednesday that kind of came into and rolled into Monday. You know, he started seeing more uh, the continuation, more aggressive selling, uh, in, especially in the Nasdaq. If you look at the if you look at the benchmarks towards the end of the week at the final bell, uh, you see the Dow up a little bit, right? You see the Dow just because again the the, the Dow is literally uh, you know the Dow is literally thirty stocks. It doesn't really take a lot. Uh, for the Dow Jones to be up, uh, the S and P, uh, S and P. I think with S and P was down. Uh, well, that's because S and P was flat. Excuse me, S and P was flat for the week. The, the one, the continuous one. This is where our, at least my focal point is. Uh, the Nasdaq was down two uh, percent, as you can see here. Even if you go back to a week ago, right? A week ago, when we talk about the ramifications, what happens. Uh, once you break the 50-day moving average, starts a selling cycle. And I, I think the way the selling cycle started in the last seven week, days is exactly what you should be uh, kind of used to, right? Or kind of starting to get used to of what to expect down the road until the bulls finally you know, put up a stand and kind of reclaim back uh, the 50-day moving average. And as of right now, we are 11 points below the 50-day moving average. So you'll see, um, like we saw predominantly in 2022, and I think we could all agree, no matter if you're a bull or bear, I think we could all agree that predominantly of 2022, we saw about 75, 80% worth of downward action in the next, and about 20, 25% of upward action. That's pretty much it. And that's, that's pretty much it. I think uh, every, you know, two and a half out of 10 days, you'll get, I know it sounds weird, but every two and a half out of 10 days, uh, you'll get uh, an up day and then followed by a down day. And that's exactly what we saw uh, in the first seven days of this newest channel below the 50 day moving average down 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 up up down up i guess you could call 60 cents on the cues up uh moral of the story is that's exactly what you're going to expect uh, you know some dead cap bounces and the cheat sheet that i've always uh, especially given our folks at acts as a trader is you know what you want to play the premium hands the premium hands are the trend days the trend days are days that everything is right right those are the those are the premium days um then you have the christmas tree days um and then what i mean by that is that's the dead cat bad days you'll have some stocks that are green some stocks that are red right a pretty pretty good disconnect but the overall theme is still down and those dead cat balances are are you know pretty pretty short-lived as you can see they tried to dead cat balance it on wednesday and then the next day gave it all back and then some and then Friday put in an inside day of Thursday selling. So that's kind of the theme. Um, you know, like I said, is the market going to go down uh, every single day? Of course not. Of course, of course not. That's it. Kind of exactly what we just talked about. And you could just see it even here. Uh, the, the second to last time we broke the 50 day, right? Selling, 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 buying, selling, 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 buying, selling, 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 buying, selling, selling. selling. You kind of get the point. So that I think that's going to kind of pre pretty much play out again uh, this time around. Uh, again, unfortunately, 
Uh, they're even the biggest bulls uh, are, are saying some really cautious things. Like, for example, uh, David Tepper. A lot of you guys know who David Tepper is. He is now uh, better known as uh, the owner of the Carolina Panthers. He is the founder of Appaloosa Capital Management, a uh, former New Jerseyan that I used to see in Starbucks all the time. He still, his, his office was about 15 minutes away from my house, moved to Florida, built a five gazillion dollar home, or at least a hundred million dollar home. But anyway, he's one of the biggest bulls, right? He's literally one of the biggest bulls uh, on the planet. There was a recent uh, interview, and I think if you if you YouTube it, it wasn't like horrible, it wasn't it wasn't like Armageddon is coming. But if you if you if you Google um, if you go on YouTube, right, and you do uh, David Tepper uh, David Tepper recent interview with CNBC, you know he he kind of you know he kind of made a very cautious stance. He is not only shorting stocks, but he's shorting bonds. Uh, he believes. Uh, the continuation of uh, continuation of rate hikes will be uh, present in uh, 2023. Um, so again, when you have the biggest bulls starting to get a little bit more defensive, and you start talking about not even taking money off the table, taking equity or exposure off the table, but talking about you know starting to short stocks and bonds, it really does paint kind of a a picture. And these and these people are a lot smarter than us. Um, but the point is, if they are following the same trend. Um, I think there's a lot of validity to it, and, and I didn't need to see a video. Uh, I didn't need to see an interview with him to kind of know uh, what we're up uh, up against and what we're headed for. Uh, but it was kind of you know kind of always reassuring to see somebody smart, a lot smarter than you, and a lot more experienced than you, uh, kind of taking the same stance and looking uh, at the same direction. The the one important part that we didn't see on on the dead cat bounce, and if you watched uh, Thursday's video. Uh, you kind of you kind of get a reference point. There wasn't any call buying, and that's the key. I, I, I've always said this, um, and I've always maintained this: short term, uh, short term speculation money, out of the money calls uh, are very, very important to light up equity prices. We didn't see that on the dead cap bounce, but the the following day, right, which was Thursday, that that whole bounce was erased, and we took down the previous day's range. We saw a lot of out of the money put buying, and you know some of the names. That continue to get hit. I mean, Tesla, Elon Musk did a whole um, Twitter spaces talking about how he has no plans of selling stock for at least two more. Well, somebody's selling, right? It's just not us just banging bids. Uh, somebody's selling. It continues to sell. It, 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 I'm telling you, it just feels like a forced liquidation here. Uh, stock closed in its lowest range in a very, very long time. Uh, they, they were coming for next week. Uh, for the 115s, the, the 120s, the 115s, and we saw some 110s uh, being traded for next week's puts. I mean, look, I, I personally think there has to be at least one bounce attempt at Tesla. I'm not going to be the first person trying to buy that bounce. We trade Tesla both sides of the market uh, when it's necessary, and I'll always short it, especially into weak bounces. Um, and that's kind of the value, and we'll get to this week in a second. But I, I do believe if, if there is a big gap down on Tesla, there probably should be at least one attempt of a dead cat bounce. Nothing goes straight up here. I mean, even even if when, when Tesla broke down here, right? We had like six, seven days. We still had two, three, four, sometimes five days of bounces. We're not getting that here. So it really does feel like, and this is just my opinion, I have no idea, but it really does feel like there's this forced liquidation. Some, you know, some fund is just uh, being liquidate again all speculation on my behalf but when you, when you get this much serious aggressive selling uh it's very very important to kind of uh, to really really pay attention uh, a name like nvidia for example and we'll get to individual uh setups that i like for this week uh nvidia had a big run right had a really really big run obviously uh has come in like everything else um you know the stock closed in the 150s notable what we started seeing for next week we started seeing a lot of 144 and 140 puts and the reason why that's so important not only did you see the the aggressive price action come in for next week but look how it's just sitting here on this rising daily support again remember the blue line from the last time here here's the last time it broke that light blue line right here's the last time it broke that light blue line look, look what happened here right so check this out i mean it's the same thing guys look what this thing is look where it closed right watch net in the video this week this is definitely my top watch this week um it doesn't necessarily have to crack down this level and doesn't have to necessarily die. But I'm telling you, we start losing this light blue line just the same way we started losing it uh, all the way back in August. And August was, I mean, look, look at this move in August. It, just in the first four days, um, the video went from 168 
uh, all the way down to 132, and that's in the first four days. So I'm going to watch this thing because, again, you know, past this kind of repeated and you have muscle memory and you, and you have a potential price action, this could be really good. So I'm definitely, definitely watching it. Uh, in the video this week again they were coming for the 140s 144s and if this thing starts really moving down and this, you know the market starts really you know unraveling look how much room you have you have room all the way down to 115. I mean, again i don't want to i don't want to be that guy on you know christmas Eve. but then it's christmas how can you talk about shorting stocks i know it's crazy right it's the market that's the market goes up market goes down the market doesn't care if it's christmas uh groundhog's day or your birthday the market's either going to go up or the market's going to go down you could you could accept it and be an adult or you could sit there and try to figure out emotionally uh what went wrong in your current uh state of affairs so i mean look we're, we're definitely still uh sell bias again can the market rally at any point next week of course i i, I think going into next week um i think the ranges are going to be a lot tighter okay so when you have a light tighter ranges and you have a sell cycle and that's kind of where we are right now i think the value is and i started playing these um a lot more this week i, I think uh the value is rejection into uh rallies into 60 minute supply or daily supply uh we saw some really pretty good moves and i'm still trying to develop them uh, i know a lot of people have been trading them for a long time um i've been trading a lot more of the bounces in a bull market than rejections in a bear but i started trading them this week Pretty darn good. I know a lot of you guys uh, feel exactly the same way. So I think that's where the value is going to be this week. Uh, unless a name like NVIDIA starts imploding below the channels. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be off this week. A lot, a lot of people are going to be done uh, for the year. Because again, we only have one, uh, one week left. And I think because of the tight channels, and again, hopefully I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, and I'm wrong, but... Uh, because of the tight channels, I do believe uh, the better value, uh, at least for us, right, us in the webinar trading the PS60 theory, uh, is going to be rejections uh, off of uh, either intraday supply uh, or daily supply. So let's talk about, let me give you guys some ideas. I know you guys have uh, Christmas stuff to, to get into. I don't want to stop that. I do too as well. I got to still clean. We're going to my wife's cousin's house tonight for Christmas Eve. And then tomorrow, the whole family comes to my house. I got to start cleaning and all that stuff. So let's talk about some ideas. Again, the video, guys, watch this bottom channel here. This thing starts losing this bottom channel. There's a lot of room down. Uh, not every not every chart is, in a weird way, um, a downward chart. Look at Crocs. Crocs is held up very, very well. Again, it's not something that I'm going to do. Like I couldn't care less about Crocs. But if you you know if you are if you are a long bias trader and you're looking for you know a, a setup here, take a look at this thing. You know if this thing starts building below the early uh, December highs, man. This thing could wake up. Same thing with Caterpillar, right? Not really my thing. You know, I trade basically technology, but boy, oh boy, look at Caterpillar. Uh, looks pretty good. On the downside, uh, again, you know, Tesla, I think the better value in Tesla, if it gaps up on a day, because remember, if Tesla's going to reverse at any point this week, I, I have to assume it will. At some day, there's going to be an update on Tesla. But I don't think that update on Tesla is going to be on a gap up. On, on a gap up, the value is rejecting it into supply. I think though, if Tesla gaps down, especially below last week's channel and starts to reverse, then I think there's a shot uh, we can get a pretty good move uh, back to the upside. So that's it, everybody. Uh, for all you guys who are planning to join us uh, for 2023, our guys are going to give you a pretty good dis dis discount to trial, the last seasonal trial until the summer. So if you are, um, if you are uh, thinking about uh, joining us this holiday season going into next year, uh, this is obviously a great time. If not, I want to wish the rest of you guys a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. May you God continue to give you blessings, love in your heart, and empathy for others. Guys, God bless. Merry Christmas. And I will see you all next week. Take care.